Buildings matter, in the U.S. at least, and we could talk globally, it's roughly the same. Uh, it gets a little bit worse, actually, in parts of the world. 40% of total U.S. energy, 70% of U.S. electricity. And what's actually interesting is that the energy intensity is actually growing. So kilowatt hours per square meter per year is actually showing growth. A lot of that is driven by, uh, in some sense, big box stores, um, the most energy-intensive applications are places where you have heating, cooling, uh, air conditioning, if you will, and refrigeration. So you go to a super target store or a Walmart. So buildings matter. If you could get 50% reduction in buildings' energy usage, commercial and residential, uh, basically, you know, this is the equivalent of taking transport in the United States off the road. And 70% is equivalent to taking the entire transportation sector off. Now, you, you can't touch the transportation sector in, in some sense because it takes a generation, 30 to 50 years, to change cars and trucks and things like that. So buildings are, are important. Multi-scale modeling is really about capturing the li different length and time scale that you see in building. Buildings breathe at the time scale of days and then lighting and various other devices in buildings operate in, in the matter of seconds or minutes. So you want to develop techniques that capture and allow the modeling of those kinds of, of situations and effective simulations. When buildings then get designed and then they get implemented, there's a lot of handoffs in the process from the designer or the architect to the construction to the owner. So what you try to do is also understand the sensitivities. So what type of equipment or controls is most important to preserve? And that's an element of either uncertainty quantification or risk assessment. Low energy buildings increasingly use natural dynamics. So instead of using a lot of forced uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipment, you also then want to couple into the natural dynamics. And so that's where controls fits, that's where diagnostics fits and monitoring of buildings. And then effectively, the final point is software development. And effective software development is an uh, important area. So these four areas are, are how the SIAM community can really be effectively deployed in the buildings area. Most of the energy savings are to be found in retrofits. And in almost all the different ways you would attack existing buildings, uh, controls matters a great deal. So as you replace lighting or windows or HVAC equipment with more efficient components, getting those components to interact correctly, which is the, the sharing of information, that really is the domain of control. So controls is essential, but so is getting the right kinds of components in the building. This is a, a building in, in Chicago. It's a hotel. Uh, and this is a retrofit opportunity. And you can get about, pick a number, 20% reduction off of base load energy. And the way this is done is basically change components, lighting and motors, to variable speed. So you get a basically better capacity matching to how the building's used. This is in Tulane. This was a deep retrofit. Here you're getting 150 kilowatt hours per square meter. You have to interact the subsystems together. So here what's being done to get this kind of reduction is you're using a lot of passive kinds of techniques. You're using radiant ceilings, you're using efficient lighting and shading, and you're, you're letting the natural dynamics of the building uh, drive performance as opposed to overloading the building with heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems. The economics for low energy buildings, I would argue, are there based on the studies that have been done to date. What the question, I think, for the SIAM audience is that some of the mathematical algorithms and computational resources haven't been brought to bear on this to really drive this effectively in terms of the delivery process and getting this to be cost and schedule effective as well as risk effective for the communities. You can get about 40% of this with a five-year payback. You can get about 50% total with a 10-year payback, and then effectively everything else is infinite payback. There's no sense for any market conditions to pay for that. And what it's going to cost is in billions per year, uh, about $75 billion, about $125 billion, and then about $150 billion. That's on a trillion dollar a year base for this industry globally. The opportunity exists for uh, design tools and the mathematics to make sure that these payback periods are actually um, brought to the market effectively. You can get about 25% reduction. You have 5 to 7% incremental cost. 
and the payback period is, is three to four years. So buildings exist, and they don't cost that much. Low energy buildings. 